Hello again, everyone. Derek Floyd here of Chasing the Impossible. Of course, we've got a great new guest to start off this segment and someone that I really respect and admire in his work. Uh, we've got Ill Factor, the producer here on Chasing the Impossible. Ill, how are you, man? Good, man. Hey, everybody. Um, pleasure to be, be here with you guys. So excited. We're looking forward to hearing your story and, and, and how you can uh, inspire us of, of people that watch Chasing the Impossible. And tell me a little bit about all the, the, the work that you've done because you've spanned quite a bit of work over time. Sure. Um, I've been able to produce music for a living for the past 17 years now. And in the span of that time, I've been blessed to work on projects such as uh, Matis Yahoo, Kelly Rowland, Sia, Gwen Stefani, Justin Timberlake, uh, Jason Derulo, wow. uh, Kygo and been uh, some share of scoring film and recently doing a lot of video game stuff. I worked on the Assassin's Creed Syndicate project, uh, The Crew, Just Dance, and uh, a current audio branding for, for Ubisoft. So it's been, it's been uh, an amazing wild ride <laughs> and uh, a lot of ups and downs, but man, it's, it's been a blessing to, to be doing what I'm doing. So. Wow, that's exciting. And for someone like yourself who's so successful, you know, we're excited to hear how you found your impossible and what got you there. Because we know, you know, it's always a process. It's not just you wake up one day and you're successful. <laughs> it takes a little bit of hard work and some determination, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think I think at the onset, when when you are when you're confronted with this dream or this this admiration that you you know of of wanting to pursue something. I think you're you're immediately bombarded with the overwhelming notion of this just seems impossible. I just don't even know where to begin. Sure. And so uh, a lot of that, you know, you, and then sometimes you assume that that's the only place you're going to experience those impossible roadblocks, but they continue to show up in different forms and in different ways. Hmm. You, and then your mindset changes throughout your time and you look at things at a different angle to overcome those upcoming impossible hurdles or sure. situations that, that hinder you down the road. Sure, sure. So, what did what was your first, or what was the what identified to you in your life as an impossible situation, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, I think I think most like a lot of people, I got into music because I had a passion for it. I loved music at a very young age; it moved me, and me and and uh, the sum of the average uh, group of friends that I had around me, music moved me in a way to, to them. And uh, I picked up the trombone, started learning at a young trombone, age. Took some, huh? Yeah, man, that's that's the one that started it all. And I think I started playing when I was six. And then that led into my middle school and high school years. And then I started dabbling into producing and DJing in my high school years. So here in Miami, which is where I'm based, I was just DJing at local uh, events and underground raves and things like that. This is like 98, 99, 99. And as I started to transition into like, OK, I want to do this for a living. I want to. I think everybody who has a passion for music starts heading in that direction of how do I pursue this passion I have and build a career around that? How do I make a sustainable living off of that? Sure. And as I, as soon as I was like, you know, wide eyed, you know, dreamy about this, and like I'm gonna gung ho and do it. Here's where the the impossible started to 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 weigh in, and the burden of that was when people came alongside me, even close people. Uh, family members and, and people that I thought would 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 help, you know, build momentum. They just came alongside, you know, you shouldn't be pursuing this. It's it's going to be a waste of time and there's oh, no real yeah. security in it. And so, yeah, the naysayers and all the haters out there. But, you know, and and, and I, I see where they're coming from and it, it might have stemmed from a good place. But ultimately what it did, it just made the dream and, and, and the ambition I had just become impossible to reach. Mm. And and it, it really just played that role of, all right, maybe I should. And, and for a while, just like, all right, well, I'll stop pursuing music. And I, I'll, you know, I went to college, uh, uh, you know, maybe the first two semesters uh, for computer programming because it was safe. And then all, right. all the while, all the while, I'm like, man, I really just I want to keep doing this music thing. And so uh, I kept DJing. I kept producing music on the side and I just kept linking up with other people. Uh, so I had the people on one side saying, you know, and. And even family, but even someone like close, like at, at the beginning was my father who really was like, ah, you shouldn't, because he was a musician himself. Oh, wow. He, ha he had a taste of it, but then it went bitter for him. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't want me to go through that experience as yeah, well. So yeah. I, I understand where he was coming from, but it just it just made this mountain much more bigger for me to climb. And, and, and I was like, well, all right, then I guess I just won't ever pursue it. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, don't do it. And then I had people that I saw doing it. And, and then I was like, 
but they're doing it. And, and so why don't I just come alongside them and ask them, how is it that they're doing it? And so, uh, met with other guys in, in the same, uh, at the same level of the ladder mm -hmm. that I was. And I, I was, it was such a huge, tremendous, tremendous blessing that God would put me alongside veterans in the field. And I linked up with guys like George Noriega and Jimmy Douglas, wow. uh, who were legendary veterans in this. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they opened the door wide open and provided this access of mentorship, being yeah. able to not just like, hey, do this and this. It was like, you know, let me bring you on my wing. And that was a huge key factor into this whole process was being mentored, being guided, having someone because uh, it's going to be a, it, it is a rugged road to go on. There's a lot of, you know, dues to be paid. There's a lot of hard work that goes in it. There's a lot of endless hours, a lot of things that go into it. And and so I think we're, when you contrast that to current climate right now where people can have instant access to whatever they want with a click of a button. Sure. It becomes, oh, well, if if, you know, if I have to put if I have to put in work or if I got to do that, if it doesn't come easy, then it's not meant to be. No, the reality is it is meant to be you because you develop to become the person you were meant to be for that position through the discipline and the hard work and the journey to get there. Yeah. Um, you know, great. so That's great. if that see, makes any sense. That kind of positions back to what we talk about chasing the impossible where, you know, you identified and clarified that your impossible was you wanted to accomplish this music thing. You were going to do it. Uh, you know, one of our other things we talk about is doing the homework. You did the homework. You, you found a mentor. You went and did you, you studied. You did websites, whatever. People think this is going to be falling to the sky, but it takes homework. It takes work for you to really get to that impossible thing. It's not just a sure. job, easy thing. No, absolutely. And 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 that aspect of doing the homework is what I like to call being the hero of the day. Mm -hmm. So um, you have two options. You have the 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 the, the ability to to know a lot, to Google everything, mm -hmm. but then when you don't know and you. Wisdom is applying the knowledge that you have yes. and there's a difference between wisdom and knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. So sure, it's like, sure. hey, I know that short key command to do that thing on Pro Tools or, or I know how to do that on this plugin or something like that. And so there's two types of people that enter the studio in the studio environment. And when I would see them work with, with Jimmy or anybody else, there's that guy who knows the knowledge. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, don't you know you could just do that and do that, do that? And, mm -hmm. and there, nobody told him. You know, they're speaking sure. just out of like, oh, I'm going to impress them with my my knowledge of this and that and, mm -hmm. and don't know and not apply wisdom and when to speak. Sure. Right. Sure. So they're like, oh, you should do this or you should do that. And like, see, I, see, I, I told you. And then the guy, you know, Jimmy would quickly turn around. I was like, I don't care. Like, who cares? And then <laughs> wisdom is. You know what? Looking around is like, you know what? The, ta the the toilet paper is running low in the bathroom. Let me go fill it before somebody asks me to do it. There you, go. you know that cable that cable needs to be wounded. Um, I got to go do that. Sure. And and those are those moments where you start to do the doing the homework is mm -hmm. finding a need mm -hmm. and adding bringing value to the table and fulfilling that need. Wow. 